Hey YouTube, it's Wes. Hope you guys are doing great. You know, we don't oftentimes have enough good news in the crypto space, especially when the market is squeezed like it is and things aren't blowing up the way that we always want them to. So I am going to share in today's news roundup, I think some encouraging things that are happening across the board that are good for you and good for me. We're going to cover some information about what's happening inside India. We're going to talk about a ton of new money coming into the crypto space that's proving innovation in spite of the market not being so great. We're going to talk about the demise of Facebook, or at least Meta's whole crypto plans and what we really should think about that, and the truth about so much more, including What's all this stuff about Matt Damon shilling for crypto? Is that so bad? We're going to cover all that and a whole bunch more coming right up. Hey friends, thank you guys so much for joining. It just struck me today is 2222. How cool is that? A whole bunch of twos for us today. And as we jump into this, I want to invite you, would you hit like and hit subscribe? I love covering crypto, technology, financial independence, all of these good things right here on this channel. There's no moon pumping. We don't do price speculation. I'm never going to tell you, hey, this crypto is going into the moon. You need to buy it now, or this one is going to nosedive to nothing because the truth is this. No one really knows, <laughs> especially not YouTubers. If you listen to YouTubers, you're gonna go broke. Don't listen to me or anyone else out there for your own financial advice. Consult people much smarter than us, maybe some certified financial planners, and make your own educated decisions. Okay, so now that the moon pumping piece is out of the way, let's jump into some news. So let's take a look. One of the things I do think is important is looking at the market at a whole Crypto is at 1.74 trillion as a whole market cap. That's not really so bad in my eyes, right? We've seen it much, much worse. And so I don't think that's a huge problem. And just looking through what's happening today, you know, Bitcoin sitting around 37,000. We've seen it much lower over the past few months. Certainly seen it much higher. Um, that's okay. Doesn't surprise me if we're going to continue to see a lot of price action that's going to be ups and downs through a, a period of time here, right? That's okay. I don't think there's any cause for panic, but I think it's so interesting. And the reason I show that right after saying no one does moon pumping on this channel <laughs> is this right here is often when you see the market like this, you see a lot of the bears jump in. You see a lot of the news articles jump in talking about how terrible crypto is, how it needs to be more heavily regulated and protected and all these things around uh, you know, it's it's not designed for what it's trying to be and is overburdened and maybe a don't don't do a bubble, right? A lot of that's FUD. Here's the thing about so many of these news cycles is when things are bad, you seize on what's bad. When things are good, you seize on what's good. Why is that? Because that drives clicks. I could tell you if I rechanged this title of this video into something like five things that are going to cause crypto to get even worse or um i don't know five five reasons crypto will fail in 2022 i get a lot more views but i think it's important to stay within the bounds of facts let's be honest and let's be truthful and let's be transparent in our approaches and so while i don't think the markets are as great as many of us want it to be it's really not so bad to be quite honest and so Let's jump into a few other pieces of, of news articles. I thought this was interesting. This came from Politico, a crypto breakthrough. I don't know that I'd call this a, a breakthrough, but certain states here in the United States are considering accepting crypto payments for taxes. And they mention one of those being Wyoming and Arizona. And in particular, Wyoming was thinking about, you know, hey, why don't we potentially think about accepting crypto as, you know, sales tax and use tax right here as you see this. And I think this is kind of interesting, right? They talk about typically the U.S. dollar is sovereign and they're not going to accept anything else. Federal and state governments won't accept anything else except their own native currency. Um, here's what I think about this. I think it's kind of interesting and, and it makes me sort of like scratch my head a little bit and be like, so what is, what's the government going to do with crypto? Like if you're accepting them as legal tender, are you just going to hold it? Probably not. So I guess that they would hold it and then they would probably sell it on a market, something like this. I don't know. I think it's really interesting. I think incentivizing people to pay off crypto for their taxes is not really like a game changer. It's not something that just makes everyone out there be like, whoa, this is huge news. But I do think it's interesting to see state governments be warm enough to even explore the potentials of taking crypto as payments for taxes. But of course, 
we're not going to see the U.S. dollar replaced by any state government for crypto, especially Bitcoin. It's not going to happen, right? It's way too much of a threat. So I thought this article was really pretty interesting. You should give this a peek and just see kind of what you think about the whole thing. Um, we'll see where this all goes and, and how things shake out. Another thing I wanted to cover, what's happening in India. So I've covered this quite a bit of late in some of my earlier videos. If you don't know, India is, and I'm sure everyone knows this, India is a phenomenal country. There's so much innovation that's coming out of it. Startup capital is pouring and injecting into the ecosystem. And India is really doing some amazing things. There's so much tech talent that's there. It's natural to see startups blossom out of there and companies grow into mega companies and go public and all these wonderful things we want to see in the entrepreneur's journey. And yet it seemed like a month ago and even a little bit before that, many in the Indian governments started to see crypto as a threat and begin to pull back from it and say, no, we're not sure we're going to allow this. Well, it's good news to see that that didn't happen. One of the things I said in an earlier video when I covered what's happening in India, and keep in mind, I'm just covering this from an outsider's view here in the States. I didn't really think they're ever going to go with a hard ban. I mean, A, it's kind of impossible to do that. And two, why would you kind of cut out so much potential innovation in the whole world of technology by taking blockchain and blockchain tech out of it? And so I think we're starting to see this. And what's happening here is they basically said this. Let me scroll to the article where we can see this. Um, the nation also plans to tax the income from the transfer of virtual assets at 30%. So that's sort of like their take. The Federal Reserve Bank of India is saying, fine, we're going to allow it. We're just going to have a pretty steep tax on the transfer in and out. Okay, I think that's a good way to go, at least if you're going to accept it. In fact, there's some value of this better than like how capital gains works here in the States. I mean, I don't want to get too deep into this, but anyone that lives here in the States and is getting ready for tax season knows the crypto world becomes really, really, really tough. How do you handle this? It's not just getting transactions from Coinbase and just submitting that, the world of bliss that we should be in. It's much more difficult with from that when you're like, for example, jumping into decentralized exchanges. And many I know that have done lots of trades and it's difficult to understand where do those trades go? When did I have them? It's not like I get a CSV export out of a lot of these DEXs, these decentralized exchanges that are out there. And so <laughs> taxes can be a nightmare to say the least. And so uh, it's interesting that they're taking this, this uh, approach here in India. But I will say, I think it's the right way to go. I think for them, at least for them to say, okay, look, let's allow it. There's too much flourishing potential and innovation in blockchain. We need to make sure that we're writing that as well as our nation. And so I think it's a good way to go. And they talked about just a lot of growth in uh, just among the Indian population around crypto itself. And I think that's a really good thing. I think they said, yeah, right here, the local market surged 641% through June to October, according to Chainalysis. That's good, right? It's, it's wonderful to see that. Okay, another one. This goes back into some, some things I was talking about as well, is even though the market may not be as high as we want it to be, that does not mean that investors themselves don't see the potential. In other words, I think what I'm trying to say is this, is sometimes when you see money pouring into a market, even when the market itself isn't doing great, that's a way to say there's the, the people that are really steering and pulling the purse strings on financing this whole world, not just in crypto, but in all things technology, is a good way to see there's still potential. The market might disagree in its current conditions with the future and the potential of innovation. They might be more bearish, but to see cash being injected should be a good sign for anybody that may be worrying, what's the potential of blockchain as a whole, right? A lot of these bears that are coming in and saying, it's gonna blow up, it's a bubble, it'll never be back to the way it was again. I'm like, really? Do you really think that when you see a news article like this coming out that's showing tons of new capital being injected even now into blockchain? Uh, and they give some examples of this, right? So FTX raised about 800 million in January, which is a staggering amount of money. Uh, they talk about Firebox and Blockdemon. Uh, they talk about, um, uh, let's see, here it is, 25 billion um, across the board for funding uh, here in the States just for crypto startups as a whole. I mean, that's that's pretty awesome. So is it really the crypto winter that like news is making it out to be? Well, if it is, it's surely a cash injected crypto winter, uh, which should make anyone that's super bearish and <laughs> got the cold around the Bitcoin less concerned and maybe less stable on that footing because there is a ton of money coming in. I mean, look at this. This is staggering for me, to me personally. Funding for blockchain startups soared eightfold, they say. 
I mean, that's incredible. In fact, I had a call today with a VC that's getting heavily into crypto and they actually reached out to me and we had a great conversation and they said, hey, we're already investing in some crypto. We know that you do a lot of that and they know that I'm, I'm an entrepreneur myself and I've started and sold many funding companies. I'm, I'm used to this world. And it was interesting to see this particular VC say, we want in on that. How can we do it? How can we do more of this? Because there's a lot of money that's ready to go in. And one of the things I think he said was really interesting is he said, you know, on our funding side, those that provide our funds, he said, we have a lot of access to very wealthy individuals. Think of those that are 500 million net worth and higher that really want to get into crypto. This is what he told me. And he said, yet they don't want to hold wallets. They don't know what MetaMask is. They can't tell you the difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum. They just have a lot of equity and a lot of capital and they want in on the game. They just don't know how. And so I think that's interesting, right? I think that that really shows the potential. There's a lot of frothiness that's still interested in this environment. And I think we need to pay attention to that, right? I think that's a really, really big deal. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't cover this one as well. This came out from Cointelegraph. Just you guys got to be re uh, remember this. You're responsible for your own funds. There's no one here to bail you out. There's no like bank insurance that's going to cover this, right? And so they, there's this came from Cointelegraph, some new malware that does target MetaMask and others that actually target both your two-factor capabilities, local on a machine, and the ability to change uh, the, the the wallet addresses when you copy pasta in and out. So this is, I mean, this stuff has been around for a little while, but seeing some of these updates come out to some of this malware, this one's called Mars Stealer. You just need to make sure that you understand and you treat cybersecurity really, really, really seriously. Malware is a big, bad deal. It's a problem. And you need to make sure um, that you're really doing the right things. And uh, I don't really have time to talk about a lot of that now. Just know the warning from a cybersecurity guy is you're responsible for your own security and you've got to take that seriously. So that's at least a starting point for you and a shakeup and a warning. Speaking of warnings, too bad for you, Facebook, Meta, whatever you're called. So this came out from CNN Business today. Facebook's dream of creating its own global currency officially comes to an end. I'm sure worldwide we're having lots of sadness, a moment of silence for our wonderful friends at Facebook that have always been so upstanding in the world of crypto and upholding all of the principles for which blockchain and Satoshi himself first set out. <laughs> now, you know I kid, right? You know I joke about this, uh, but I do think that's pretty interesting to see them finally calling quits on Libra, and there's probably a lot of reasons for it. Both the, the whole goal of what they were trying to do with it, its capabilities and difficulties around it, potentially being a security, um, and just, it's, it's, they're, they're, they're just not, it's, this is not for them. And so, not super sad about this uh, at all. I think a lot of people did want to cash in on it just because it's Facebook. Um, but we can see why Facebook would want to do their own crypto just to continue to drive their own economy. But, you know, I'm certainly not sad to see it fail. And lastly, this one I think is continuously interesting. And we're getting close to Super Bowl season again. I remember watching the Super Bowl with a whole bunch of friends last year. And, you know, it was kind of funny. Because when the commercials came out for Crypto.com and everyone's watching, like, holy, holy smokes, is that Matt Damon on a crypto commercial A-list? And a couple of them turned over to me like, so Wes, maybe you're right about crypto. Like, maybe everyone's in it. And then we saw a few months uh, later in, into the, the, this current season, Tom Brady even gave out a whole Bitcoin to a fan who returned a football from his 600th touchdown pass. And then people were like, so even Tom Brady owns crypto. Remember what I said a minute ago talk about all this capital being injected into blockchain? There's a ton of wealthy people that are in crypto. Some that are younger, like Tom Brady, and I know it sounds like he's old because that's all the news cycles say since he just retired, but let's be honest, he's still in his 40s. He's young in most ways, I would say. He's got plenty of money and he's actually in crypto. He said in that one article when he was interviewed about giving the fan a Bitcoin that he owns Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and I don't know what others that are out there as well that he owns, but he's been big into it. And I can't imagine Matt Damon's anything different, right? A lot of these multimillionaires, very wealthy A-list celebrities certainly have a lot of money and they don't want to just hold it and keep it in a bank. They're going to want to invest. Things like real estate, things like businesses, things like crypto. These are three huge investments that I get into personally because it allows me to diversify. I certainly don't put all of my holdings into crypto. That would be ridiculous. And so uh, going back to Matt Damon, is it so wrong for him to be paid to do uh, an ad for crypto.com? I don't think so. I don't understand the hate for all of this. Shilling? I mean, come on. In, in theory, anytime anyone endorses anything, 
They're shilling for it. I don't think there's anything wrong with shilling per se. I think it is what it is. And if you believe in the mission, you believe in the company, the reputation behind it, it can be okay. And I realize it was things that he said, like, you know, comparing, you know, crypto and crypto.com going to the moon, right? Or like the Wright brothers that you see here, like this huge innovation. And I think in some ways, crypto is this monumental innovation. It's on par with the creation of the internet, in my opinion. We're just young into all of this. So shilling, sure, if you want to say shilling, but is it really a problem? I mean, A, he probably got paid handsomely for it and you and I both wish we could have gotten paid, but he got paid for it and we didn't. So to the victor go the spoils. But I also think what's so wrong with that? I mean, really, let's be honest. He got what he was due and he believes in crypto and crypto.com, even though they had a hack recently, which I covered, they are a great company and making all the right strides. And it was cool to see him on a Super Bowl commercial. Finally, my friends were like, well, maybe Wes is right. Maybe this whole crypto nerd stuff is cool. Wes, why don't you tell me more about crypto? <laughs> I joke, but that kind of happened. I'm always known as a nerd among my friends, but finally with Matt Damon, at least he did me a solid and got me popular for a few shining short minutes during the Super Bowl halftime. All right, my friends, that's today's crypto news roundup. I'm pretty excited about where crypto's going. I think these news articles are good and it shows positive growth and positive traction for crypto. Would love to know what you guys think about all this. Leave me a comment down below. Thanks.